Welcome to our IET 422 safety training video on general electric safety. There are over 1,000 regulations that have been made by the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, otherwise known as OSHA, that deal with preventing accidents with electricity. We will be covering some of the most common standards used for general electrical safety. Note that all standards, even those that aren't discussed in this training session, are equally important. As another note before we start, all the OSHA standards in this video will be repeated verbatim without calling out each specific reference number. Please be prepared to take down notes if necessary. Let's begin. Many standards have been formed since OSHA's beginnings that deal with improvement of electrical safety. Our objectives for this video will cover three major subparts of the following general safety requirements. General requirements, wiring design and protection, and wiring methods, components, and equipment for general use. In the first subpart, we will be discussing electrical equipment and the standards that evaluate it. Under general requirements, it is stated that electric equipment shall be free from recognized hazards that are likely to cause death or serious physical harm. Predicting hazards before they come up is a major key and safety equipment is always necessary. This equipment should be evaluated by the following. Suitability for installation, mechanical strength and durability, wire bending and connection space, electrical insulation, heating effects under all conditions, arcing effects, classification by type, size, voltage, amp capacity, and use, and other factors that contribute to the practical safeguarding of persons using or likely to come in with the equipment. Please take notice of the OSHA standards reference numbers. In the next subpart, we will be talking ab about the identification of grounding and grounding conductors. Under the wiring design and protection section, it, it says a grounded conductor shall be identifiable and distinguishable from all other conductors. According to the National Electric Code, the NEC, Article 200.6, a grounded conductor or the neutral shall either be white, gray, or have three continuous white strips running the entire length. An equipment grounding conductor shall be either green or a yellow stripe or bare. A grounding terminal, such as on a receptacle, may not be used for purposes other than grounding. Again, I would like for you to take notice of the reference numbers. A very common and very important safety device is the GFCI receptacle. Section 1910.304B deals with this device. Ground fault circuit interrupter, the GFCI, should be all 125 volt single phase 15 and 20 ampere receptacles installed in bathrooms or on rooftops. You can see a picture of a GFCI on the screen. A GFCI receptacle limits the amount of time a person is exposed to the current from an electrical shock. It does not prevent electrical shock. This is a common misconception. In our last subpart of the video, we cover conductors that are entering boxes, fittings, or cabinets. Conductors entering cutout boxes, cabinets, or fittings shall be protected from abrasion and openings through which conductors shall be closed. Any unused openings in cabinets, boxes, or fittings shall be closed. Where cable is used, each cable shall be secured to the cabinet or cutout box. However, there is an exception. If you are using non-metallic sheath cable and it is supported by a non-flexible raceway and is not less than 16 inches or longer than 18 foot, fixing is not required. One very important thing to remember is if conduit is being used to protect conductors that the maximum fill of that conduit is not exceeded as described in the following OSHA standard regulations. Take note of the number. Overfilling conduit can lead to excessive heat buildup and fire. Annex C of the NEC list, many conduit fill tables that are very helpful in determining the space required for conductors. Now that you are more familiar with electrical safety, we hope that you will put these new regulations into practice. Remember, this video only covered a small portion of the safety standards required by OSHA. 
In order to work at the safest possible extent, make sure you review all the standards before you work with electricity. Also, be educated on any local regulations that are required by your city zoning laws. Always remember, it's safety that matters, especially when working with electricity.